Welcome back. In some ways, white nose syndrome really pushes us because bats can be so hard to keep track of. Honestly, there are species of bats that we know very little about, and we know even less about diseases that affect them. However, we are starting to get a pretty good idea of how white nose syndrome got started in North America. Beginning in uh, the winter of 2007, 2008, we began seeing um, or hearing reports of these sick bats, uh, what we now know as white nose syndrome. It's something that's been migrating across the United States so for at least three years or so, starting up in New England, migrating down along the coast through the Virginias. It uh, has actually surrounded Mammoth Cave National Park now and has been found as far as the panhandle of Oklahoma. All of a sudden, there's this cold growing fungus that can infect them and do serious damage to them when they're most vulnerable. Most North American bats have to hibernate to make it through the winter. Now, most of us probably think of a 500 pound bear fattening up for hibernation. It's hard to translate that into a bat that weighs only a few ounces, but bats do hibernate, and that's when white nose hits. They hibernate for five or six months out of the year. Their immune system almost entirely shuts off and are susceptible to a fungus such as Geomyces destructans, this fungus that causes white nose syndrome to grow on them, almost like a hunk of cheese in a refrigerator. This fungus has found a way to somehow get into those vulnerable hibernating bats, get around their immune system, and do some serious damage to their bodies that leads to their death. They wake up, they are uh, stressed, they burn up the reserve of the food and energy that they've been carrying through the hibernation. They go outside in search of food and they run into winter and they run into the fact that there are no insects. Many species of bats, particularly the bats that are being hardest hit by the disease, um, aggregate in large colonies in the winter and these hibernacula we call those. Uh, they use that to share warmth, to stay together. They, they like to do that. They get benefits from that. So what's happening with the, the colonial behavior is it's clearly uh, aiding in the spread of the disease. The fungus is rubbed off from one bat to another. Once the fungus burrows into that living wing skin, it grows and digests and, and destroys all of the important organs that are inside that tissue. And that not only disrupts the bat's ability to fly when it comes out of hibernation, but there's also lots of things those wings do during hibernation that are probably important for keeping the bat alive. And they're dying in masses, 92% to 100% in some bat populations. And so it's devastating the bat population across the United States as this, as this fungal disease moves forward. It's really the perfect storm. You have an emerging disease popping up in hibernating bats in North America, and it has the potential to change the face of hibernating bat populations on the continent. With such a challenge facing bat populations, it will be up to all of us to help find a solution. Up next, we'll look at what's being done now and what the future holds for bat populations. <laughs>